Hey, this is Spencer with the Canix Hardware Department, and I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot your Zebra RFID gun if you're having trouble getting it connected to the Canix mobile app. So you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need some test metric tags. You're going to need your RFID gun. You're going to need your phone or your mobile computer uh, that you use the Canix mobile app on. And then you're going to need access to a PC and a micro USB cable because we're going to be plugging the wand into the Zebra Utility app on the PC. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to factory reset the RFID gun. And to do that, first make sure it's on. And you'll know it's on by the, uh, the beeping noise it'll make. There we go. So I'm on. And the first thing I want to do um, is you'll see here a blinking blue light. That means it's looking for something to connect to. Um, but we're going to ignore that because you're going to hold the Bluetooth button here, that blinking blue light. And then the power button, that green one, hold both of those at the same time for five seconds. And you'll hear a beep. That means you factory reset everything. All the settings here are gonna be the default, so we know we're working from square one. And you hear the beep for it to reset and it's back on and we're ready to start. So let's head over to uh, the PC. Go ahead and plug in your RFID gun. Plug it in uh, with the micro USB cable you have into your PC and we'll switch over to that view. Now that you have your RFID gun plugged in, uh, you're going to go to Zebra123 scan. You can get that um, simply. It should be the first thing that comes up uh, when you Google uh, for the app. Um, yeah, make sure you go for the one from Zebras. Uh, don't click any of the Google ad ones. Um, make sure you look for the Zebra.com specific one. 123 RFID desktop support and downloads. Then you're going to download the correct version for your desktop here. Um, and then make sure you just get the most recent one would be my suggestion, which is this one right here. Uh, so we're going to go back to um, my desktop here and we're going to look at 123 scan. Uh, let's pretend I just downloaded that and we're in. So we open up and my RFID gun is connected. So it's going to load here um, and it'll be able to show me what I have connected. And then we have a couple moves we need to do uh, to make sure that we're up to date with everything. And then we're going to uh, use some, we're going to modify the settings uh, for a couple things as well. But first, first thing you want to do, um, I already did this, so, uh, but when I did run it for the first time, it downloaded a pretty large file for what I was expecting, um, about 300 to 400 megabytes, uh, which is kind of, kind of big, uh, I would say for, for firmware. So uh, you may need to do, especially out of the box, you may need to do a firmware update. Um, so go ahead and click update scanner firmware. You can also do this through the 123 RFID mobile app. Um, but I'm fine, again, just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm running it through the PC version. Um, so it might pop up that you have a new plugin available. We'll go ahead and hit continue and it'll download. So I do actually have a new plugin in between the last time I set this up. Okay. And installed, okay. Um, so we confirm that we want to update the firmware on the following model. Mine says RFID 8500. Yours is going to say RFD 40 um, right there. Common models as well. Um, that's really the only difference. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and even though we already factory reset, I'm someone who likes to do it multiple times uh, just to make sure that it's done. Uh, you know, it, maybe it's a superstition. So click update firmware and it's going to update the firmware and set us back to factory default again. So I skipped until um, it was done there. You'll hear the, the gun beep and trust me, you'll hear it beep um, because the factory default setting is pretty loud. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is clone modify my connected scanner settings back in this 123 scan app because this is where we're going to go set the region and then the, uh, the, the trigger actions, um, which is telling the gun that we want it to scan things, not just activate RFID when we click the trigger. Um, let me see here. If you get an error like I'm getting right now, it just says potential USB error. I get that when I plug in my headphones to charge. I get that when I plug in really anything to this computer. It, it's probably just a my computer thing here. Um, and since it says potential, go ahead and skip. I have not encountered any problems after that, that pop up. Um, if you do, we'll crack into it. Um, but it is not something I would worry about right now. Okay, so you'll see here um, that the RFID, uh, yours will say RFD40 here, um, but we see our wand in the corner. This is the one we want. 
Um, and we're not going to use the wizard um, uh, at, at this junction, uh, only because I know where we're going uh, to, to go change the things we need to change. Um, so the first place we're going to go, we're going to make sure it says factory default settings here, which is good. We're in the configuration called factory default right now. So we are going to go into general. And this all looks good, especially for if for some reason you you, you bought your uh, your RFID gun uh, from an international seller, you might have to change that here, but it, it should be North American. That all looks good here. What we're looking for now is the one other place we need to check for um, to make sure the region set, and that's going to be actually on the RFID here. Um, these all look good right now. Again, these are the factory defaults. We shouldn't touch any of these, uh, to be honest, unless you see something radically different uh, in things like power level. Uh, 270 is what I would go for, but that, again, is that's why we reset everything to factory default. This should look identical right now. Um, okay, so we're going to scroll down a little bit more. Um, there's, as you can see, a lot of questions, so got to make sure I find which one. No region set. You see how there's no region set here? Regulatory configuration, country of operation. That's what we need to change here to United States of America, um, which is going to be listed right there. United underscore states. Um, that's the one you're looking for. Everything else here looks good. Here's the next thing we got to change. Start RFID operation on trigger. Yes, that's what we want. Um, we want it to, when we squeeze the trigger, do something. Um, so operation start triggering mode, start on trigger press. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, repeat start trigger. Um, yes, you want to repeat start trigger monitoring. Otherwise, it's just going to look for it once. That's why we're getting the beep and then nothing um, because it's done its job. It said, hey, it's here. That's what you wanted. Um, so we're going to change that default. That was one I missed last time without being able to crack in because I didn't have the RFID gun next to me. Um, okay, um, so the next thing we're going to go stop RFID operation on trigger. Enable, yes, correct, we want that to happen. Stop on trigger pull, no, nope. we want it to stop on release. So once we release it, it's gonna stop scanning. It's gonna stop looking for RFID and that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, everything else you don't need to touch. Uh, it looks good here. Um, just to double check everything here. All right, so make sure you click done down here because that'll make sure things are set. And then the last thing you have to click is load to scanner. Uh, so that's going to actually set everything. That's why we're using the PC version because we can really, really get into detail here uh, in a way that the mobile app doesn't really uh, do. And that's where we were running into issues. But um, we will deal with the mobile app in a second. Um, so just click load to all scanners. Make sure yours shows up in here. It should. Uh, again, we're, we're expecting it to and it will. Um, so load all scanners. And once we have it loaded onto there, fantastic. We can click close and then you're good to disconnect. So I will meet you back on this camera uh, and we will talk about connecting it to the Canix app. Okay, so you can unplug so that your uh, RFID is free from any cords. Um, and you're gonna see that green light indicates we're on, that's good. I don't have any light here until um, I indicate that I want to search for something. Um, so I'm going to go to my phone's Bluetooth setting first before clicking any Bluetooth button uh, and make sure that my phone is in pairing mode. You can see this is the screen on my phone settings that has my watch and the speakers that I've connected to throughout my life, uh, apparently. Um, and so uh, now that we know, you see that I'm looking for other devices, we're going to click the Bluetooth button on the side here. One second. All right, you'll hear a beep. And then it should start blinking like that, blinking a slow blue blink and you'll see it pop up in your phone here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click that and then while it's pairing, after I clicked it, squeeze the trigger. You have to confirm the pairing by squeezing the trigger. That's why you heard a beep right there and then it'll show up in your phone's connected. That's another part we miss is you actually have to squeeze the trigger to accept the pairing on the RFID gun. By default, there's really no way to change that one. Um, so make sure you've clicked and it's connected to your phone to make sure that it's on there. Remember we said on Android phones, it's gonna go blue. 
um, when it's connected. It will go from white to blue. And I think the missing piece was squeezing the trigger while it's trying to connect. That's accepting it on this side. When, when that light starts blinking fast, squeeze the trigger, you'll hear the beep to connect. And so notice I haven't opened RFID 123 on the phone at all. Um, we did everything we need to do with that on the computer. Don't even worry about it. Let's not even open it. Um, so, but we are going to open the Canix app and you'll hear when I open the Canix app, this should beep. Um, so that is great news. Just a reminder um, that in your Canix settings, which I got to by flipping to the side, that's not going to work well. Um, but because of that, but I uh, scrolled to the side to get to that side menu, as you've seen, where you see the Bluetooth settings. But we're going to go to um, settings on Canix and then make sure it says, ugh, again, tough. Uh, Bluetooth scanner is what we're looking for. That, that setting there, make sure that's checked. That's telling the Canix app, forget the camera on the phone. I'm looking for some sort of scanner. Um, so we are going to go into uh, plants now and we're going to make sure that this is working for us. Okay, so you are going to go into identify plant and you'll hear a beep, meaning that your uh, RFID wand is ready. And then pull up some metric tags. I got some here. These are... Uh, genuine metric tags and you'll go I didn't have to click anything on the app and you'll hear it beep beep and then I got my number in there um, so that should work uh, and that would be what we're looking for uh, so everyone you scan you can go in there and then the audit will work as well if you go backwards you'll hear it beep to go once you're out of identified plant and you can go to start RFID audit and then you can do that from there as well you'll see it connected um, whereas before we were seeing it disconnected um, so that should be the way to connect, um, fully connect uh, your RFID 40 uh, to Canix as well as any other Zebra RFID gun. They all operate using the same software um, that we built into Canix uh, to make sure that RFID works. Um, so yeah, uh, let us know if you have uh, any other questions and we're happy to help.